right, welcome back to Shifting the Solids. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Boolean feature in Onshape. It's a 3D tool that allows you to manipulate uh, geometry that kind of overlaps on one another. And it might be a way to fix some problems that you guys have had um, run into, uh, but to be able to use your parts without starting completely from scratch. So uh, if you follow me up to the top, we'll see kind of where this lives. Last week we talked about mirror. Today we're gonna to be on the Boolean. So if we hover over it, it says perform a union, subtraction or intersection with two or more parts or surfaces. And if we look at those, the logo, the icon, it's two circles that overlap, almost like a Venn diagram. So we're going to kind of draw that today to show how this works. However, I'm going to have some uh, circles that are going to overlap uh, more than once. So we're not just going to have two, we're going to have like two or three, maybe four, just to show you kind of how this works, all the different pieces. So if we back out, we got to start with that geometry. So like always, we'll start with a sketch, shift S to bring up that sketch. We're going to click the top plane and we'll say N for normal, P to hide those planes. And I'm just going to draw some circles. Um, we'll kind of go here. We'll make it four. We'll make sure these are in line with one another, like that four. And then I'm just going to use our transform tool uh, here. Slide that to where they overlap a little bit. So you could use the dimension tool. Um, if you guys are keen on that, we can make these exactly. Um, here we go, make those a few inches apart. And we'll make these uh, points horizontal to one another. That way we kind of get a perfect overlap. Um, so you'll see what we have here. Now, if I go and add, we'll add one more. Just down here. To where we are overlapping, again, four inches. You can move that guy up like so. So we have some places where we can see all these spots where it overlaps. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually make these circles uh, their own solid piece. So we're gonna switch on over to extrude. You can hold down Shift and E or click it up here. Um, but we don't want all of this. We're gonna press space and we're gonna click all of this as a new part up here. And then we can leave it at one inch so we can kind of see what we're doing. We'll say okay. And you'll see I have a light blue uh, cylinder. So let's turn our sketch back on. We're going to do extrude again, but we're going to hide that part one and we're going to click this geometry new. We'll say, okay. And we'll do it one more time. Hide part two. And we're going to click extrude. And we're going to pick these bottom pieces down here. And we'll say, okay. So now if I turn all three parts back on, you'll see we end up with this kind of weird crosshatch pattern. And what's going on is that this gray piece right here and this light blue piece and this blue piece all exist in the same space. So what do you show? Do you show the blue? Do you show the gray? Do you show the dark blue? Right? They're all existing at this point for sure in the same location. This has the blue and the gray. This has the gray and the dark blue. This has the light blue and the dark blue. Um, so you can see kind of what goes on, right? But the whole reason we're here is to figure out how this Boolean works. So if we get back to kind of go on a side view like this, we will use that Boolean. And so we'll start with union. So right now it's asking me for tools and it says it can't resolve entities. So what are my tools? Well, your tools, if you think about it, um, they're kind of your parts and your parts are what are going to make that shape. So you're using a shape to cut out another shape. Um, but what a union is, is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to unite these two pieces together. So if I click my teal cylinder or my light blue cylinder and I click my gray cylinder, you will see they both become that uh, light blue color. And if I say OK, you'll see now instead of having three parts down here at the bottom, I have two. And if I shut off part two, you'll see it's it's the combination of those two. You can see my sketch still on here. 
those two circles that they overlapped, right? So again, if we go back into Boolean, that is my union. If you notice down here though, if you follow me right here, we have this keep tools button. If I check that and I click that box, you'll see now from instead of having the three parts that I had before, I have my original three, but the Boolean is now added as its own part once I click OK. So now I have part four, which is a union of those two circles. I have part one, I have part two, and I have part three that still exists. But now I have this new unionized part four that is a combination of those two. So that's how you use the Boolean union feature with the keep tools function. If we go back here, maybe I want to do the opposite and I want to use uh, turn. Let me go back here. We'll get rid of that. Keep tools. We'll say, okay. So now if we see with my parts on, I have just two parts. I have my light blue and my dark blue, but maybe I want um, this piece in between where they overlap to be cut out. What I'm going to do now is click Boolean again. And this time, instead of union, I'm going to go to subtract. And what we're going to do on subtract, same thing, tools. However, what's doing the cutting and what is the target? So before in union, we had two tools. What are we going to combine? Now we're going to go to subtract and subtract is what's going to do the cut and what's going to do the cutting is kind of how I look at it. So tools are going to do the cut and what is the target? What are you cutting into? So if I use my blue, uh, dark blue cylinder as my tool and my target, I come back down here and I click the light blue one as my target. You'll see that it now cut out that chunk where they overlapped. And again, I could do keep tools and I'll still have my two. Now this time, if I shut off part two, you'll see I now have this chunk cut out. So if you guys are doing any kind of gearing uh, cam type businesses, things where things need to roll across each other. This is an awesome way to do it. Um, some of you eagle eyed viewers might notice that another box popped up that said offset. Um, if I click that, I can add. So what face do I want to offset? I can offset that face and this face. And how far do I want to offset it? I can add more of a uh, offset type feature. So if we say get rid of these, there we go. It's not like in the, the way we did the union. Uh, you know what? Let's just swap it. We'll do these. And we'll say the tools are going to be this and the target is going to be this face. We're going to offset. Go down quarter inch. And you'll see if we go here, that's where I'm trying to get. There we go. Since I clicked offset all it, it kind of went all the way around all those faces, but I could do just the offset. And I could mess with these, come on, there we go. And give it some sort of geometry that's going to, there we go. Get to click the face um, and I can offset that. So you'll see here, I can manipulate this number. And because I'm doing uh, that face. It's going to offset from that corner. I could go here and it would offset that that much. So um, it's got 1.05. I could change it to two. And you'll see it starts to change that a little bit. You can flip the direction you want to do it in. But you'll see now that's a bigger slot Change it to three. And you'll see it's offsetting a lot more. It's cutting, cutting out how it's offsetting. So depending on how you want to do this, personally, I would just cut it with a, uh, 
with a, a remove extrude feature, but that's how you would go about doing it. But for the subtraction part, I think that's the coolest part is getting those cams to be like we need to. So let's swap this back so we can finish our last one. So tools, targets here. Oh, we got that backwards again. Tools are gonna be here. Target is gonna be this. We'll say okay. And we're down to one part, right? So I only have one part left because we didn't use our keep tools function. So I go back to my Boolean, say keep tools, we say all right. Now what I wanna do is I kinda of want an intersection somewhere over here. So what I can do is go back to this. Let's just go straight from here into an intersection instead of a union or a subtraction. This time I want this and this to intersect. I'm gonna shut off keep tools. And if you guys notice this slider right here, you can see kind of basically what it is. It's preview before and after this feature. So if I go all the way to the left, I'm gonna see what it looks like before I accept this feature. If I go all the way to the right, you'll see what's left after I accept this feature. If I click keep tools, again, you'll see I jump to three tools instead of just the, the one. If I uncheck, I get rid of those tools that I started with, okay? If I click okay, you'll see I end up with the overlapping part of that cross section, whatever was left. So maybe you're making a kind of a swivel or you have some super intricate geometry that needs to be uh, overlapped and reused. Uh, you could go about it that way. One thing I do want to show you kind of the, the way I see it being used. I'm going to create another part studio. And I'm just going to make a real quick uh, gasket type gusset type thing. So I'm going to click shift S on the top plane N to hide or to normalize. P to hide those planes. We're going to go R for a rectangle, center point rectangle. Make it five by five. I'm going to round those corners with the fillet tool. This is going to turn it into, uh, we'll go one inch. That'll give me some circles that I can add here. I'm going to make a 0.5 say that I want all of these to equal by pressing the letter E on the keyboard and it doesn't like it because I selected the origin on accident. So I'm going to click these again. I'm going to click just the two on the bottom, make sure I only have circles and then press E. You'll see now everything is equal to one another. So I'm going to then turn this into a uh, plate. I'm going inch down, turn my sketch back on, click just my studs here, shift E, we'll go up an inch that way. I'm going to select here, hide the part, I'm going to select everything again, and I'm going to go up five inches. Five inches, and you'll see we are we're gonna get this new. Let me shut the sketch off. I'm gonna have this like box lid type thing, right? Um, we turn it into a cross section. You'll see that this is our cutaway. And if I move this a little further, you'll see that those cylinders live in there like that, right? And if I shut off one part, it doesn't exist, but there's no holes for that to go into. So this is where the Boolean kind of would come in handy if I'm making like a lid or something. Yeah, I could do that remove extrude like I showed you guys earlier, but what we want to do is use the tools that are available. So learn all these. So we're going to go, not union, um, but subtract. And so the tools are going to be here, I'm going to pick the bottom and the target is going to be the top, but I do want to keep that as a bottom piece and we'll say, okay. So now if I shut off part two, you'll see there's still my piece, shut off part two, turn on part one or turn off part one. And you'll see I have holes cut in their perfect um, locations 
And now maybe I needed to add like a threaded insert or there's another mounting plate or a shim or something that has to be based off of this. I don't have to copy the geometry over. I can just do that real quick Boolean feature. Um, I know if you guys are doing this for the speed modeling challenges, um, sometimes I've run into where I'm like, I know this is the right geometry that should work. It should go together. It should match. It should be perfect. And it isn't. And for whatever reason, I can't figure out why I have four parts instead of two uh, or one. I'll just boolean the whole thing and add it all as a union because it's all one mass at the end of the at the end of the day. So um, play around with this. Come up with some project ideas you could do. Um, but like I could see yourself making like lids or threads or pressing features. Um, but whatever. But the boolean is a very very good uh, tool and it's used across all drafting programs. So if you learn it here, and you're like, well, I really need to figure out how to use this in AutoCAD. I'm pretty sure this will work very similar. Um, and it's just a good way to kind of think about things and how you're making things mate and go together, especially if you're going to go take it further and go into the assembly type tools. So that's going to do it here for us today. Um, tune in next week and we will be talking about the split feature. Uh, and that's that's pretty cool as well. So um, these split Boolean and uh, transforms next. But those are all things that kind of go together that would allow you to um, manipulate some geometry you already have without going back to the 2D sketches to then manipulate that 3D uh, shape. So I'll see you guys next week. Take care.